Uh, Bob, normally, of course, one likes to start by asking an actor about his character and, and what he does in the story. Now, in your case, of course, the, your character's name tells us what he does, but, yes. but fill us in on the narrator. How, do, how does he fit into the story? Well, I didn't figure this out until about a week ago. <laughs> it would have been nice if I'd known what I was doing, but it didn't matter, actually. Well, when I read the script, I just went, oh, great. I mean, I, you kind of know. I mean, there are narrators in things. I kind of felt like the, uh, the narrator in our town. The Thornton Wilder play is really kind of what I, I thought. And I thought it's a great honor to, you know, in a, in, a, in a movie by a person such as Wes, with all these great people, it's kind of an honor to be in charge of the story, in a way. So I, I kind of got with it right away. But what I began to think, months and months and months after the movie was, this is a movie in the heart of which is this brilliant, well, these two kids, but this brilliant little girl who reads adventure stories, right? They make so, it's such an important part of the movie. The books that she carries with her have affected her entire life. And clearly, here's this girl telling the story of her life in some book in 20 years from now, and this is going to be her book. So we're doing the book. We're really, we're really making the movie of the book that's being written by the character in the movie 20 years later. So I thought, I'm, the, I'm her voice. You know, it, it didn't affect anything because the movie was over at that point. But I thought, it's a fable, and I'm. You know, I'm carrying the... I'm really a book, basically, and I'm her book. Now, I feel bad, because I should have sought the spot of that when I saw the movie. Now, you've got an excuse, because, of course, nearly all your scenes are solo, so you're, you're performing in isolation. Yes. Well, but, solo, but there is Wes. What, so, like, to me, you're, you know... You're never alone yeah. when, when Wes is there, but that must yeah. be slightly strange to see the finished film. Actually, it wasn't at all. I, I wish I could say that it was strange. The only big surprise for me when I saw the movie at the end and when I, I saw it about a couple of months ago. We, the, some of the actors went uh, in New York. And the only big surprise for me when I saw the movie was how emotionally involved I got with, with the story of the two kids and the story of the parents and Bruce and the ending up with the child. I was as affected by this movie as I could have been if this were Sophia Loren and two women. And it's so surprising because there's so little obvious emoting in the movie. It's very subtle, but very, very powerful. And that was the big surprise for me. I knew I would think it was funny. I knew it would look great. I knew it would be fascinating and fun. I didn't know how involved I would get. And again, last night, I got really, really involved. And my, you know, it's a famous story, but I would, but Bill Murray was, you know, weeping at the end of the movie. I was crying, you know, everybody was crying. Uh, and you don't expect that to happen. I think it's very Brechtian. You know, he, Wes does everything he can to say, look at this, it's a movie, it's artificial. That's a, that's, a, that's, an, that's a kind of a paradigm of a house. That's a paradigm of this or that. So it fools you, which is one of the reasons I think it's such a pleasure to watch, because instead of manipulating your feelings, he dares you to have your feelings, which is very, very emotional. As you say, the film is both subtle and, and powerful, and that's quite a good description of, of, of Wes as, as, as a director. How did, how did you find the experience with Wes? Well, I've had the great privilege of working with some, some of my favorite directors, and, and they all share something. They all do it differently. Um, Sidney Pollack liked to rehearse, uh, never liked to rehearse. Sidney Lumet, we rehearsed for four weeks before the movie, and yet it was still the same experience in some way. And I, th I think the, the thing about working with Wes is when the movie starts, you can feel, you can feel him taking over everything and like, some, like a king does when it's a great kingdom and, the, the, and everybody's doing well and there's no unemployment and everybody's very well read. He's like the ruler of a very happy kingdom. It makes you secure right away. He, he can tell you what to do without telling you what to do. I think the greatest directors say nothing when they should be saying nothing, but when he wants something, he knows just how to get you to do it, no matter how. He'll do whatever it takes. He'll tell you how to say it, he'll tell a story about it, he'll do anything, and if he doesn't say anything for a few days, it's because it's all going the way he wants it to go. So, it's, it's a pleasure. And in this course, this, in this case, this, this kingdom is a, is a blessed isle. It's a beautiful realm. I mean, the, the, the physicality, the geography of this yeah. film is very striking. Well, it wasn't beautiful being there. <laughs> I mean, we worked on Prudence Island, which is the tick capital of the Western Hemisphere. I mean, you stood there. I opened a book once while we were sitting out there. There weren't even trees, and like 17 ticks started crawling around on my book. It's like, oh no, and I sprayed poison all over me as much as I could, but we didn't seem to get bitten. But it is a, it's a tick-infested haven. 
Well, that's rather spoiled the illusion of, of beauty, but... Yeah, uh, take it away right now. Talking of beauty, though, here we are in, in Cannes, a rather different experience for filmmakers. Yeah. And, and what, what's the experience like for you for bringing a film to Cannes? I find it strangely relaxing to be in Cannes, probably because I didn't direct or produce the movie, so it's like, great, feed me, put me in the most beautiful hotel in the world, meet some nice people. I love the fans here. I mean, they make me sad. I'm deeply sad by people who wait and wait and wait and nothing happens. Like I came out of the hotel this morning and, oh, well, may we have your autograph, Bob? And I thought, how sad for them. The real movie stars aren't here. So they have to be excited that I've come out of the hotel. But it's, it's kind of relaxing. And you get the feeling, because of Gilles Jacob, I think it emanates from him. You get the feeling of people who adore movies here. The fans adore them. Everybody at these, everybody who came last night, I'm not used to film being regarded by a large number of people as a hallowed experience, basically. And that's the way it felt in that giant thing, with, with the army lined up on the stairs, or the navy anyway. And I mean, I, some of the pictures I took last night, when I was standing up there, and they're, like, they're taking our picture, and I'm like with my camera doing that. I mean, it was pretty staggering, but you always got the feeling that it was happy. You know, you didn't have to worry. They were gonna, they were gonna love the movie, they were gonna be happy that you were there, and it's a very friendly place a very expensive, friendly place. Well, we're glad you joined us. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Good to see you.